Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and this video is about intrauterine growth restriction. Intrauterine growth restriction or IUGR is a condition in which the fetus is smaller than expected at the gestational age. It indicates that the fetus is not growing properly. It is detected using ultrasound. The gestational age is determined by last menstrual period, the LMP, and early first trimester ultrasound through crown rump length measurement, the CRL. The CRL is very accurate in determining the gestational age, so this gestational age is then used later on in pregnancy. Towards the end of the first trimester and the start of second trimester, that is from 12 weeks onwards, fetal growth is assessed by measuring biometric parameters, which include femur length, humeral length, biparietal diameter, head circumference, and abdominal circumference. Measurements of these parameters correspond to the gestational age of the fetus, which is automatically calculated by the machine once you take the measurement. Normal measurements will align with the gestational age by LMP or CRL. For example, if the gestational age by LMP is 20 weeks, then the normal measurements of femur length, humeral length, BPD, HC, and AC should also correspond to approximately 20 weeks. There can be a difference of 1 week or 10 days. Some values may give 19 weeks. This much difference is normal. The ultrasound machine can use the biometric parameters to calculate the estimated fetal weight, the EFW. This weight tells us that the fetus is growing properly and we can also check whether the weight is appropriate for gestational age. Now we will compare the features of a normal pregnancy with the features of a growth restricted fetus. In IUGR, the abdominal circumference is usually affected. On the left, we have a normal measurement of abdominal circumference. It measures 15.5 centimeters, which corresponds to 20 weeks, 5 days. By LMP, it was also 20 weeks. On the right, we have a small measurement of abdominal circumference. By LMP, gestational age was 20 weeks. The AC measurement was supposed to be around 15.5 centimeters, but it was 13.2 centimeters. Percentiles are used to tell whether the values are smaller or larger than normal. In simple words, if any measurement or value is below 10th percentile, it is considered abnormal. Values below 10th percentile are small and indicate fetal growth restriction. Values that fall within 25th to 95th percentiles are considered normal. Regarding abdominal circumference in IUGR, it will be below 3rd percentile. For 20 weeks, an AC value of 13.2 cm is less than 3rd percentile. It is a small abdominal circumference for 20 weeks. The next feature of IUGR is an estimated fetal weight below 10th percentile for gestational age 
with abnormal Doppler findings. Estimated fetal weight is a collective measurement of biometric parameters, so we can refer to the fetal weight instead of looking at biometric parameters individually. The normal EFW at 20 weeks is around 355 grams. In an IUGR fetus, the fetal weight in this case was 280 grams at 20 weeks, which is less than 10th percentile. This value of weight suggests growth restriction. Oligohydramnios, which refers to abnormally low levels of amniotic fluid, can be seen in IUGR. The two methods used to measure amniotic fluid are amniotic fluid index, the AFI, and MVP, the maximal vertical pocket method. The normal AFI range is between 5 and 25 centimeters. The normal MVP range is 2 to 8 centimeters. In oligohydramnios, the AFI is less than 5 centimeters and the MVP value is less than 2 centimeters. Head circumference by abdominal circumference ratio is also helpful in diagnosing IUGR. The measurement of HC is divided by AC. Up to around 20 weeks, the normal HC by AC ratio is approximately 1.2. After 20 weeks, the ratio can be approximately 1 or 0 0.9. Symmetrical IUGR is when all parts of the fetus are proportionally small. Both the head and the body are equally small, meaning the head circumference, abdominal circumference, and femur length are all reduced proportionally. In this case, the HC by AC ratio will be normal. Asymmetrical IOGR is when the fetus has a normal sized head but a disproportionately smaller body. So in this case, the HC by AC ratio will be increased. Usually it is more than approximately 1.3. Early maturation of placenta is observed in IUGR. For example, at 20 weeks in a normal pregnancy, the placenta is grade 1. It has few calcifications or hyperechoic areas and indentations. These are the indentations. They are not very deep. In IUGR, the placenta may show a grade 3 appearance much earlier in pregnancy, at about 20 to 22 weeks, for example. Many calcifications and hyperechoic areas can be seen inside the placenta along with larger and deeper indentations. This appearance and grade is supposed to occur at around 39 weeks, but it has occurred way before, much earlier in pregnancy. It is a strong sign of intrauterine growth restriction. Spectral Doppler is very helpful in evaluating IUGR. This is the Doppler evaluation of the umbilical artery. The normal umbilical artery has a low resistance waveform on spectral Doppler. The peak of the waveform is during systole and the slope and the trough is diastole. The low resistance is indicated by a significant forward flow during diastole. This line, the zero point, is the baseline. Generally, forward flow is seen above the baseline. Normally, in the umbilical artery, flow is seen 
above the baseline throughout the cardiac cycle. There is no flow reversal. In case of IUGR, absent and diastolic flow might be seen. No waveform is seen during the end of the diastole. You will see these empty areas on spectral Doppler. This may be seen in the umbilical artery of a growth restricted fetus. ST ratio in a normal umbilical artery generally is less than 3.5 approximately up to 28 weeks. And after 28 weeks, the ST ratio is less than 3. These are approximate values. However, in the umbilical artery of a growth restricted fetus, the ST ratio can be more than 3.5. Also in some cases, instead of absent and diastolic flow, you may find end diastolic flow reversal. The waveform during this phase is seen below the baseline. This indicates flow reversal. Pulsatility index is used to assess the resistance to blood flow in vessels. In the umbilical artery, the normal PI is approximately 1.2 at 20 weeks, 1 at 30 weeks, and 0 0.9 at 39 weeks. These are approximate values. In IUGR, the umbilical artery pulsatility index is greater than 95th percentile. It may be more than 1.6 at 20 weeks, greater than 1.3 at 30 weeks, and greater than 1.1 at 39 weeks. Resistive index also assesses resistance to blood flow in vessels. The normal RI is between 0.65 and 0.75 at 20 weeks, it is 0.64 at 30 weeks, and 0.5 at 39 weeks. The SD ratio, pulsatility index, and resistive index all decrease as the pregnancy progresses. In IUGR, the resistive index is usually greater than 0.75. The middle cerebral artery is also evaluated by spectral Doppler. The normal middle cerebral artery, the MCA, shows a high resistance waveform. It has a sharp systolic peak with low diastolic flow. The resistive index is usually between 0.7 and 0.89 approximately. In a growth restricted fetus, the high resistance flow turns into a low resistance flow. There is significant diastolic flow. This indicates brain sparing effect. A resistive index of MCA between 0.4 and 0.64 is considered abnormal. The brain sparing effect is a phenomenon that can occur in a growth restricted fetus. Blood flow to the brain is increased to preserve brain function because the brain is the most vital organ for survival and development. This is why in spectral Doppler the flow changes from high resistance to low resistance. It is a compensatory effect in a compromised fetus and this natural phenomenon is crucial for survival. One thing to keep in mind is that abnormal MCA Doppler findings do not directly indicate IUGR. We need to compare these findings with the findings of the umbilical artery. Cerebral placental ratio is the ratio between MCA pulsatility index and umbilical artery pulsatility index.
This ratio helps in comparing the Doppler findings of MCA and umbilical artery. The normal CP ratio should be greater than 1. An abnormal CP ratio is less than 1. Pulsatility in the umbilical vein seen with previously mentioned features can indicate IOGR. The normal umbilical vein has a steady venous flow without peaks and troughs. It is a smooth waveform. When pulsatility is present, the waveform shows crests and troughs which are prominent high points and low points on the waveform. This is another image showing pulsatility in the umbilical vein in a growth restricted fetus. The normal vein has a smooth monophasic flow. The pulsatility in the umbilical vein must be present without fetal movements or hiccups. Such movements can also cause pulsatility in the umbilical vein, so make sure hiccups and fetal movements are not present during umbilical vein evaluation. The uterine artery Doppler findings can also indicate IUGR, especially in the second trimester. The notch seen during diastole in the uterine artery waveform in the second trimester can be a sign of IUGR. This groove should not be present. It is not seen in a normal uterine artery. Another main parameter is pulsatility index. The normal PI is from 0.8 to 1.2. In this abnormal uterine artery, the PI was 2.1, which is elevated. It is greater than 95th percentile. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.